In this video, we're going to consider the limit behavior of rational functions. Remember, a rational function, I'll call it r of x for rational, is just some polynomial divided by some other polynomial. So for example, we might have something like 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. And, and when you look at these rational functions, you should immediately remember that they're not defined everywhere. There are some points where things go bad, right? For example, if you were to plug in x equals 1 into this rational function, on bottom you'd be dividing by 0. You would have, you would have 1 minus 1, you'd be dividing by, dividing by 0, right? If you were to plug 1 into this, if you try to plug 1 into this, you'd have 0 on bottom, but on top you'd have 3, so it would be on defined. And so that alerts you that, that there's a good chance there's probably going to be some kind of vertical asymptote going on there. And we'll, we'll verify that in a second. But let's just draw a little sketch and, and just alert ourselves that at 1, this is, this is not defined. At 1, this is not defined. We suspect there's some kind of vertical asymptote there. But, but what happens when we approach 1? What happens when we are close to 1? That is, we want to know what is the limit of my rational function as my x is getting closer to 1 from both the left and the limit as my x is getting closer to 1 from the right. And this might seem a little bit tricky, like how are we going to know without plugging it into some graphing calculator or going to some website and graphing this? But, but I think we can do it by, by just keeping track that we're plugging in something a little bit smaller than 1. We're looking at values a little bit less than 1. And so to think about this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write plug in something a little bit smaller than 1. A little minus there will remind me it's a little bit smaller than 1. And, and when I do that, let's think about what happens. If I plug something a little bit less than 1 in, and then on bottom I subtract 1 from that, it ends up being a little bit less than zero, a really tiny negative number. So let me denote that zero with a little minus. It's something a little bit less than zero, like negative 0.1 or negative 0 0.01. On top, if I plug in something a little bit less than one, you times it by two, it's a little bit less than two. Add one, it's a little bit less than three, so I'll just say a little bit smaller than three. So intuitively, you should think this is something like maybe like 2.99 divided by, you know, like negative 0.01. So something, something like that, right? But, but what is that going to do? It's a nice solid number, something essentially 3, divided by a really tiny number. Well, it's going to blow up, right? That's going to blow up. It's going to become a really big number. And, and, and it's going to be a really big negative number because divided by a negative. And so, and you coming in from the left, you just have some really big negative numbers. And when you get even closer and closer, be even bigger and bigger negative numbers. And so that indicates that this function is going down as I move to, move to minus 1 from the left. Or we'd say our limit as x approaches 1 from the left is negative infinity. How about when I approach 1 from the right? How about when I come in, come in from this right-hand side and I approach 1? Well, let's do the same analysis. Let's plug something a little bit bigger than 1 into our function. On bottom, if I plug something a little bit bigger than 1, I subtract 1, I get something a little bit bigger than 0. So I'll just plug a little 0 plus to remind me it's a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger than 0. On top, if I plug in something a little bit bigger than, than 1, it becomes a little bit bigger than 2 when I times it by 2, a little bit bigger than 3. So I'm a little bit bigger than 3. So this is going to be something you should think intuitively, something like, you know, 3.01 or something like that, divided by a really tiny positive number, like 0 0.01. And, and as you move closer to 1, it's even smaller. It's 0 0.001 or 0 0.001, right? So what happens when you, when you do that division? Well, dividing by a really tiny number makes it blow up. It makes it go off to go off to infinity. It's positive and positive, so it's going to go off to positive infinity this time. Last time I had a negative, which made me go to negative infinity. This time they're both positive, so I'm going to positive infinity. So when I come in from the right, I'll be going up to positive infinity like this. Okay, so we get some pretty good ideas about, about how this, this function works near that vertical asymptote. And of course, since the limit from the left-hand side and the right-hand side disagree, 
we'd say that the overall limit as x approaches 1 of my rational function does not exist. But there's another type of question you might wonder about these functions. And that question is, well, what happens as I keep going further off to the right? As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what is this guy going to do? Is it going to shoot up? Is it going to shoot down? Is it going to flatline? You know, what's going to happen? And, and so what we're asking is, is what is happening to my function as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger? And I'm going to express that with the statement, what is the limit as x approaches infinity of my function, of my r of x, which I'll just go ahead and, and write out here. 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. This, this is, now, x can't actually get to infinity. You can't actually plug infinity in. Infinity is not a number, but this is, this is a shorthand for saying, what is this function approaching? What is it getting closer and closer to as x gets arbitrarily large? A thousand, a million, a billion, a trillion, and so forth. How could we possibly begin to think about this? Well, you might build some intuition just by plugging in some, some big numbers. So you might be like, okay, what happens if I, if I plug like a billion into there? And you'd be like, well, I would have 2 billion and 1 divided by 999,999,999. It's like, okay, a dollar, like one more than 2 billion and one less than a billion. But, but I think it becomes quite clear when x is going to infinity, these, these plus 1 and minus 1 don't really matter. You know, if you have $2 billion, you don't get so excited if you find a dollar or if you lose a dollar, right? So, so when you go off to infinity, th those, th those last terms don't matter. All that matters are these terms in front. So you would have two times a billion over a billion, essentially, which comes out to be just, just two. You might think intuitively this should just come out to be two. Okay, let's make that a little bit more rigorous, a little bit more justified. And the way I'm going to justify this is I'm going to stop and I'm going to realize, well, 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 1, figuring out what that is, is the same as taking the top and bottom. I can multiply them both by the same thing, right? I can I have a fraction. I can times the top and bottom by 5 or by 3 or by whatever. Here I'm going to times the top and bottom by 1 over x. I'm going to take this leading power. This, I have an x out front of both of them. I'm going to divide both the top and the bottom by x. What do I get? Well, this first expression becomes just 2x divided by x, so that's just a 2, plus 1 divided by x, 1 over x. And the second one becomes x divided by x is just 1, minus 1 divided by x. What did this accomplish? Well, now think about what happens when I take the limit as x goes off to infinity. When x goes off to infinity, 1 over x, 1 divided by a huge number, is just going to disappear. It's not going to matter. 1 over x is going to go to 0. And so I'll be left with just 2 over 1, which is just 2. So this justifies our intuition that when x is going off to infinity, we don't need to worry about the plus or the minus 1 or any of those last terms. All that matters are these leading terms, the, the large big x there, because that's the thing that's going to have all the weight. So, so this tells me then my limit as x goes off to infinity is 2. So my graph, as I go off to infinity, I should be getting closer and closer and closer to a line here at 2. How about as x goes off to negative infinity? What is the limit as x goes off to negative infinity? So negative infinity for 2x plus 1 over x minus 1. An exact same reasoning as before. This 1 and, and minus 1, those aren't going to matter. So it's just going to be like 2 times a huge number divided by that huge number. Or, or in the analysis down here, it just comes out to be 2 divided by 1. So again, it's just 2. What happens to the negative? Well, you have like a negative, you plug in the top and on bottom, so they cancel. Here, here, the 1 over a negative huge number is still going to 0. 1 over like negative 1,000 is negative 0.001. 
still going to just go to 2. So when I come here, x is going to negative infinity. When I'm moving to the left, this guy will be headed also to this line at 2. We call this line the horizontal asymptote. So we have a vertical asymptote going up and down. And we have a horizontal asymptote going back and forth. For the vertical asymptote, our, our limit came out to equal plus or minus infinity, depending on which side we were. For the horizontal asymptote, we asked what is the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity, and it came out to be this nice finite number 2. We'll look at some more examples of this in the next video.